Still filming at an undisclosed Las Vegas vacation at one of three possible security conferences. Now, I know I always bring special treats, but Allison Miller talking about something we haven't even come close to talking about so far. First thing, if they're looking for you out on the social, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at, at Selena Kyle, S-E-L-E-N-A-K-Y-L-E. -E. And there's a cool joke in there if you know what she's talking about. All right, so Allison, you've got... One of the cooler jobs that I've heard of, doing things a lot differently than most of the security people that we've talked to so far. I'm not even going to try to summarize it. Break it down. What are you guys going, what are you doing right now? Okay, well, some of my sort of personal research is really focused on where we can fuse data science uh, with the sort of social impact, the human impact of our work. So I particularly like economics and behavioral economics. But I think the best way to sort of explain to people what I do is I live at, at layer eight. So above the application level, I'm actually looking at human behaviors and how those manifest potentially as threats in social and financial systems. So for example, uh, things like fraud or uh, spam or account hijacking or these sort of transactional events that aren't necessarily uh, vulnerable software, but vulnerable people potentially, and how to address those and develop technology so that we can protect those folks from potential harm. And so you're studying the interaction between the people with the tech that they use and then applying that data towards, what, perimeter security? I'm trying to wrap my brain on this. Sure, sure. So uh, it's definitely very data-driven. And so the behavior manifests as data. So it's data science. It's filtering through the data and applying machine learning and AI and all the fun buzzwords. Bingo. But it's, Sorry. Yeah, exactly. But essentially to get to um, systems that can then uh, interact with users and take them through safer paths or take bad actors through, uh, show them the door, if you will. So you guys aren't just building taller walls and deeper moats. It, it's and I know I'm probably getting this wrong, it feels like almost a crowdsource approach where you want to get all of your people involved in securing the network, or am I totally wrong? Um, well, that's not really how I, I, I don't think of it that way. I actually sort of believe that the perimeter is gone, it's changed, that the perimeter is actually people themselves now. Okay. And so how do we change the design of our systems so that those folks are protected on our platforms without necessarily depending on them um, to always make the right choice or to not make mistakes or you know in some situations you actually just have it's bad actors there it's not necessarily um, uh, a good interaction that you're protecting but actually a bad intent kind of thing coming your way like a fraud transaction where you have to pick that out from all of the different events and really get down to not just seeing the behaviors but kind of being able to predict or understand the intent behind what's happening, which is very tricky. And so there's a lot of data involved. And the predictions could be based on behavior. It could be based on an incoming thing that comes just from outside of the perimeter. I mean, you've got a lot of different things to sort through. Yeah, well, essentially, uh, if you're a user-facing platform, you have no perimeter between you and your users, right? You're interconnected with them. And so where you, you, you gather signals from where you can, but most of the way that these systems work is they translate behaviors into events and they're gonna make a decision about an event. So we're able to draw on things like decision science and operations research and just, you know, general statistics type stuff that is well, sort of well trod as far as research. Um, but applying these to these sort of new cyber problems that manifest because we're building all of these new systems and we're having these new interactions with people. So given, it, it seems that people in general were more technical than we were even five years ago. So we were a little more security aware. Uh, the amount of technology that's out there, everything that you're sifting through, are you hopeful? Are you nervous? That when you look at the near future and a little further down the road, where are you feeling right now emotionally about where we are security-wise? Um, I, I, I feel I feel hopeful because I, I feel like um, you know what what's happening is the questions that we're being asked to answer are changing a little bit. So there's an opportunity for us to up our game, but there's a lot of great technology innovations and innovations from other places like economics or uh, psychology, sociology. We could just sort of go broader, I think, and, and pull tools and ideas from different places to help build things better overall. That's my hope. I, I think we can get there. 
So given all the information that's out there, knowing that, that you sort through a lot of it, where are some places if people want to dig deeper into this, whether if they want more education for their own benefit or to help their organization, where do you go that these folks might be able to access? Well, I'm an extreme econ nerd, so one of my favorite uh, places to go to is WISE, the Workshop for Economics and Information Security. It's an, it's an academic kind of event, at, but they all publish their papers, and so you can kind of look through and sift through and get ideas. And when it comes to things like using, you know, using data and leveraging telemetry better, there's tons of information online about learning about machine lear how machine learning works and learning how data science works. There's plenty of, plenty of free courses available, very high quality, and lots of tools too that you can just play around with for free and try and understand how these things work at a lower level. And one more time, if they're looking for you on the socials, where are we going? You're going to at Selena Kyle. Probably not in the pleather bodysuit, but maybe. Just depends if it's hot or not. Maybe. If you're looking for me, as always, you can find me at PacMat73. I don't know if we can find somebody that's got a broader range of what she's got to deal with than Allie, but make sure you come back because we got a lot more cool stuff to come.